Alrighty, so it is five minutes after. We're going to go ahead and get started with the webinar. So thank you everyone for joining us. So this webinar is about harnessing marketing automation to make your moves management strategy more robust and automated. Well, let's start off with a review of the agenda we're going to go over today. So on the agenda today is a brief introduction of your presenters followed by a real-life example of how KVIE has increased productivity in their organization by utilizing marketing automation. Then I'll speak to you about some nonprofit-specific use cases for marketing automation, especially in the nonprofit success pack. I'll also provide some useful tips or hacks that you can implement within Salesforce. Then my colleague, Melissa, is going to speak a little further about marketing automation concepts and best practices. A couple of housekeeping notes. We are recording this webinar, and we will be sending the recording out to all of the registrants within 48 hours. I'll announce that again a little later on. Um, and then also another housekeeping note is uh, we have a questions functionality within uh, through two webinars here. So if you have questions, go ahead and type them into that questions section. We'll uh, reserve the chat for other conversational pieces, uh, but we'll go through those questions at the end of the webinar. Um, so feel free to type in your questions there. All right, so let's start off with a brief introduction of all of our speakers. We're gonna start off in order here. So we'll start off with Sarah Yaffa from PVIE. Hi everyone, I am Sarah Yaffa. I am the marketing coordinator at KVIE Public Television. Um, KVIE is a PBS member station in Northern California, and as the marketing coordinator, I support our programming and our membership departments to promote our different shows like Nova and Nature, um, and coordinate our social media, email marketing, all that jazz. All right, thanks, Sarah. Uh, my name is also Sarah. Sarah Messini. I am the lead consultant at Idealist Consulting. Um, I primarily work with nonprofit organizations to set up Salesforce and the Nonprofit Success Pack, um, and I've been in the nonprofit space for a number of years now. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Melissa Foley. I'm the project manager lead here at Idealist Consulting. Um, my background is a little bit mixed. I started in the uh, nonprofit area and did digital fundraising, and then I uh, moved over to Salesforce and worked with large enterprise clients uh, for Salesforce Marketing Cloud, and then I came to Idealist uh, about seven months ago. So I'm excited to talk to you today. Great. All right. So we will get started with hearing about Sarah Yaffa and KVIE's story with their journey through setting up marketing automation. Go ahead, Sarah. All right, thank you, Sarah. So KVIE has been working with Salesforce's marketing automation tool Pardot for about six months, and we've been working with Idealist to onboard us and catch us up with some marketing automation strategy. Um, but really quick, I want to tell you about how we got to Pardot. Um, so a long time ago, we started with mass email tools. Um, I think at one point we were using Blackbound. I'm sure some of the tools we started with no longer exist. Um, we started looking for marketing automation solutions to do things a little smarter, and we used um, an Oracle tool called Eloqua. Um, Eloqua wasn't doing quite as many things as we wanted it to, so we started looking for a new marketing automation tool, and we landed on Pardot. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about what we were looking for and why we chose Pardot. Um, so this is a list of some of our requirements that we were looking for. First of all, we needed whatever marketing automation tool we used to play nice with our Salesforce database. We use Salesforce um, as our membership database. It, we've had it for many years and we needed it to work with it. Fortunately, Pardot being a Salesforce product works pretty well with our database. Um, and again, we needed 
it to work with our Salesforce database and NGO Connect, which is an app that sits on top of our database. Um, and we needed to be able to trigger emails based on what happened in NGOC um, to send out to our members. We wanted to easily group and manage our contacts. We wanted to easily uh, execute campaigns and programs. We wanted to understand what those report or what those campaigns were doing with simple reports. If you notice, I said easily many times. Um, that was something that we were looking for when moving from Eloqua. One thing that was on our wish list um, that Pardot unfortunately doesn't meet is a payment processor. Pardot does not have a built-in payment processor, but we're actually able to work with the tools that Pardot has, like form handlers and uh, customized URLs to um, include our existing donation forms in Pardot forms, and also to see who lands on our forms and make sure we tag them and bring them into our system. All right, so now that we had Pardot, um, one of our major membership and marketing goals is to retain existing users or existing members, excuse me, year over year. So we're reasonably successful with direct mail, but over the years we've found that pairing direct mail with email generates better results. And because Pardot hooks up to our Salesforce database, it's a really convenient way to automate those renewals. And automating that reduces the burden on our membership team. So let's take a look at how we did it. Um, when someone signs up to be a KVAE member, Salesforce creates an expiration date a year after their sign-up date. We synced the membership expiration date field to Pardot created a series of automation rules that send emails at intervals ahead of their renewal date. So the first one, and you can see all the specifics of the automation rule here, um, the first email is sent 100 days before their membership expiration date as part of a pre-renewal effort. This email encourages them to switch to an ongoing membership based on monthly donations. Since our ongoing monthly members don't receive renewal notices, the email actually uses that as a selling point. Um, 75 days before their membership expires, members are sent their first true renewal effort, reminding them of the benefits of membership, the importance of their support to KBIE. These emails come again at 35 days to expiration, 15 days to expiration, and two days to expiration. And if they choose not to renew their membership, they're sent a final appeal 30 days after their membership expiration date. So let's take a look at some of those emails. Um, the emails actually use variable tags to personalize to the member with their name and their expiration date. Um, they, each email uses the same header and it uses similar language and we can easily update this language and these headers based on new assets or new priorities or just on a yearly basis to keep it fresh. Um, so here you can see on the left our pre-renewal effort, reminding people, hey, if you don't want to get these emails, become a sustaining member. Uh, the middle one, I think, is 35 days to expiration. And then on the right, is our final appeal. We don't want to lose you as a member. So these automation rules are simple, but they work really well for us. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about those benefits. Um, while Parda has an engagement program feature, once a prospect has gone through an engagement program once, they cannot re-enter it. But with automation rules, we anticipate being able to use this automatic renewal system for years to come and updating the actual emails as necessary. When a member renews, their membership expiration date is pushed out by a year, and a year later, they're asked to renew again, all without anyone in our membership team having to deal with return physical mail or costly phone calls. And we use the automation rules to exclude members with ongoing memberships, or major donors who work with a separate department. Um, in the future, we plan to further personalize these emails by using dynamic content to refer to the programs each member has told us that they love so that we're not advertising Nova to a Downton Abbey fan or vice versa. 
So with these automation rules, we have a system that helps us retain members, is easy to update, and will continue to operate without constant staffing needs. No lists to build, no reports to pull, and we're excited to see where we can take this program. And I will hand it over to Sarah. Okay, thank you so much for sharing KVA's story, Sarah. That's a, a really great example of how you can use as a nonprofit a marketing automation concept. Um, it's relatively simple. And before I get started with my content, I'll, I'll just reiterate that we are recording this webinar. Uh, we are going to be sending out the recording within 48 hours. Uh, and again, we have that questions section where you can type in some questions and we will get to those at the end of the webinar. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share two more examples of how you can use marketing automation concepts in the nonprofit setting. I'll also show you two Salesforce hacks or tricks you can use with those two concepts. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first concept I'd like to talk about is creating cultivation efforts that are tailored to your constituents' interests. The basic concept here is that you can group your contacts into interest-specific campaigns and use those campaigns to create automated drip content in your marketing automation tool. And the reason I'm suggesting campaigns here instead of just a field is you can reuse those campaigns over and over again, like a custom list. If you use just a field, you end up having to pull the uh, report over and over again. Okay, so here's the steps. Uh, first of all, if you don't already have your constituents' interests in your database, you can send out a survey to all your constituents. Um, that can be something really simple like an email, and then you can hand enter all the results. You can do something more sophisticated, like getting a form tool that plugs into Salesforce. Um, this step doesn't have to, have to be super sophisticated as long as you're getting that information back into Salesforce. Uh, then what you'll do is you'll add each of your constituents who's interested in a specific topic within your mission into topic-specific campaigns. So you might have a puppies campaign or a homelessness campaign or a homeless puppies campaign, whatever your mission is based around. And then you can use those campaigns to create content programs and really cultivate your donors with information that they care about instead of just generic commission-based information. So this is tailoring your content and your cultivation efforts around donors' interests. So alongside that, I'm gonna talk about our first hack. So the first hack dovetails in this, the first concept. Uh, so keeping track of Interest within campaign memberships can be a little tedious for staff and require a lot of clicking around in a database. So this hack is really getting at reducing the amount of work that your users have to do to maintain those campaigns. Uh, so what I'm suggesting that you do here is use a tool called Visual Workflow. If you're not familiar with this tool, um, it's kind of like Workflow Rules, kind of like Process Builder, but it's actually more robust than both of those. Um, so the concept here is you can create a, just a simple text field and call it something like interest. And you can list each of, each of your constituents' interests and separate each of those interests by a comma or a semicolon. And then visual workflow will be triggered anytime you make an edit to that field. And what the workflow will do is anytime that field is edited or updated, it'll take a look at what the interests are check to see if that contact is already in a specific campaign for that interest, and if not, it'll add them to that campaign. So then your users are just editing that field, and you don't have to worry about them adding these folks to the right campaign all the time. So again, this is around cultivation, making sure you're targeting your constituents with content that they care about. All right, let's go on to the next concept. So this concept is very similar to what Sarah was describing for KVIE's membership renewal efforts, but instead of being centered around membership, 
uh, you can run a similar renewal effort with donors based on their last gift date. You don't have to have a formal membership program to ask donors to continue to support you year over year. And this concept is centered more around the solicitation stage, so that ask stage of moves, moves management. And here's what this would look like. So you'd build some reports around donors' last gift date, maybe even their last gift amount, largest gift, those sorts of NPSP fields. Um, and then you'd add those contacts into a campaign, maybe you would call it 2017 renewal campaign here at the end of the year. And then with that campaign, you can cre create some drip content asking for renewals at specific intervals through your marketing automation tool. Um, so again, very similar concept to what Sarah was talking about with KVIE, but instead of having a formal membership program, you're just asking donors to continue supporting your mission if their last gift date was from the prior year and not this year. Okay, so the hack or trick I'd like to introduce for this concept for solicitation is around generating customized ask amounts for your donors. And organizations often have to put a lot of effort into determining how much to ask each donor, whether that's for an e-blast or for a mail appeal. Uh, so what I'm suggesting is you could set up a formula field that produces an automated ask amount on each of the donor's household or contact records. So I've added some if-then logic on this slide to, to tailor your ask amounts around different levels of donors. So if you've got a base level donor, um, and that could be whatever amount range makes sense for your organization, um, you could have the first segment of the if-then formula say that these, this level of donor um, is going to get an ask amount of their last gift amount multiplied by 1.5. Then if they're a mid-level donor, um, you can do the same thing, but multiply that last gift amount by 2. And then finally, if they're a top level or major donor, you can take maybe a different statistic in NPSP, their largest gift amount, and multiply that by 1.2. Um, so really changing dynamically based on the donor's total giving history and um, those levels as you define them. So again, this is around solicitation, automating some of the effort around getting your asks out to donors. Okay, I'm going to hand it off to Melissa and she's going to talk with us about marketing automation concepts and best practices. Great, thanks Sarah. Uh, so I want to talk about uh, where you should start with marketing automation and help you determine uh, what to automate. So that can be a tough, tough question to address. So there are uh, three questions that I will be discussing to help you determine what you should automate. First question is, what is the goal? This should be your starting point and will inform your content and structure for your marketing automation program. A few examples might be increasing donor gift amounts, getting volunteer shift signups, or sharing new causes and initiatives with your donors and volunteers. The second question that you need to answer is, who do you want to talk to? One helpful way to determine who you should talk to is to create personas for your donors. And personas can be defined in a lot of ways and can include many components, but I like to think of personas as a composite sketch of your donors that allows you to better understand who they are and how to communicate with them. Your organization might already have personas in place, but if you're starting from scratch, you should focus on your highest value donors and the data points that overlap amongst them. And then once you've identified those donors, you'll be able to target them specifically using segmentation with any marketing automation tool. And segmentation can also help you form and support personalization efforts that you and your team may want to include as well. And the last question, and probably the most important to answer, is identifying your data starting point. And it's 
really crucial to identify this uh, successfully in order to use marketing automation because you have to ensure that you have the correct data in place to support the actions you actually want to take with your donors in order to support your overall goal. So some ideas around um, data starting points can be very simple, like last gift date or last gift amount. Um, even a new email address being added to your CRM can be a data starting point for your marketing automation program. Next, I want to talk about a really important concept that you'll want to take advantage of when you're using marketing automation, and that's personalization. So first, what is personalization? It is dynamically tailoring your communications website or social channels based on the preferences of your donors or members. And it's not just a buzzword. Is it important? It's really, really important for two reasons. One, your donors expect it. They're receiving personalized communications from other nonprofits they support, as well as online experiences with businesses. And even though you might not be competing with Amazon, your donor has the expectation that the same level of personalization they experience with Amazon will be offered to them during any online experience or communication experience with, with an organization. So your donors expect it, so you need to do it. Second, there is a lot of value for your organization um, by using personalization. So Force.org's recent report on the state of the connected nonprofit found that 90% of donors felt it important to know exactly where their money was going. And they also revealed that 65% of donors would donate more funds annually if they received one piece of personalized communications from the nonprofits they donate to. So the bar is kind of low. You only need to send one, one piece of personalized communications just to uh, kind of spark that relationship with the donor. And particularly, if you take a look at um, this uh, graph on, uh, on the screen from the report, um, it shows the generational breakdown uh, around personalization importance. So depending on who your donors are that you're talking to, there could be even more value for your organization to gain by using personalization. So now I want to talk about a couple of quick ways to take advantage of personalization. The first is dynamic lists, uh, which Sarah Yeffa talked a little bit about with KVIE. But overall, dynamic lists are based on rules that you set, and they add new donors automatically when a donor's data changes and meets the criteria of your list. This can be a really simple and efficient win for your team because it allows you to no longer have to manually update lists or manually manage a communication process. The second way to quickly take advantage of personalization is by using dynamic content. And dynamic content, put simply, is HTML included in your digital communications that displays certain content based on information you have about your donors. So don't get worried. You might not have any coders or HTML writers on your team. Um, your marketing automation tools will um, help allow you to insert HTML very easily into your communications. And you're probably using this in some way already, like including a donor's name in the salutation line of a renewal letter or your e-renew series. But I think you should take this a step further and display even more relevant information, uh, like the programs your donors might enjoy watching, like KBIE is going to do, or by sharing information about events that are coming up based on your donor's location, which is based on a simple data point of the code you have for them. So overall, these are two types of personalization that can be really quick wins for your team to take advantage of with your marketing automation tool. And last, there's been a lot of information about how great marketing automation is, but you might be wondering, am I ready to do this? Is my team ready to do this? Uh, we created a little quiz for you to take to find out if you're ready or maybe you're already using marketing automation and uh, you want to do a reset as a team to make sure you're on the same page and your strategy fits some of these ideas and concepts we've been talking about, this quiz can kind of be a fun way to uh, start that conversation as well. And uh, last, we just want to say thank you for joining us. I would appreciate your time and hope that this has been beneficial to you. And Sarah has been monitoring questions while I was speaking. Sarah, did we have any 
other questions that popped up? Yeah, I haven't seen any other questions come across in the question section. Uh, so if any of you do have questions about the content we shared, uh, feel free to type that into the questions section now, um, and we can we can talk through that. Um, moves management and, and marketing automation have been kind of buzzwords on the scene for a while, um, and I think they can work in tandem really well together. So hopefully this webinar outlined um, specific ways you can use marketing automation and fuse that into your moves management strategy with your donors, um, especially in those two stages of cultivation and solicitation. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions come across so far. So we must have been extra clear about everything. <laughs> okay, so I have got a question from John here. Can you explain the rationale for the strategy mentioned earlier where prospects get fewer emails than donors? Um, I'm not quite sure if I understand your question here. Prospects get fewer emails than donors. Um, so the, the strategies that we were talking about were specific to existing donors. Um, are you asking if we're suggesting you send fewer emails to prospects? Yeah, yeah, so not necessarily. Um, you just want to have a different strategy with your prospects. Um, certainly you can tailor those, that information a little bit around, you know, their name and the information you do have about them. Often with, with prospects, you don't have as much information unless you have some sort of um, wealth screening tool to know how much to ask them for or how to approach them. Um, but generally speaking, uh, marketing automation is going to be a little bit more um, one size fits all for your prospects unless you have some more information about maybe market segments, that sort of thing. So yeah, we did focus quite a bit on existing donors and um, using move management on those existing donors. Does that, does that help answer your question, John? Great, okay. And then Chris is asking, where will I find visual workflows? Yeah, so visual workflows is one of your automation tools both in the Salesforce. Um, it's actually been around for a long time. Not a lot of people know about it though. So if you go into your setup panel, um, if you just type in the word flow in your setup panel, um, you'll find a flows menu item. Um, it may also be called visual workflow depending on whether you're in Lightning or Classic. And uh, Visual Workflow is not specific to Lightning Experience. Um, it's been around for a long time. Uh, they did release recently a uh, more Lightning Experience front end to Visual Workflow. And Visual Workflow is really centered around getting information from your users, but it also does a, a ton of automation in the background. So I highly recommend looking into it. It is a more complicated product than something like regular workflow rules. And Sarah, I asked you this yesterday related to visual workflows, but is there a reason why you would want to use visual workflows instead of process builder? Yeah, so for the example that I had up, you could use process builder for something like that. Uh, where you're going to run into some snags is um, that lookup functionality. So checking to see if the contact is already in the campaigns. Um, Process Builder is going to not be sophisticated enough to do something like that. Visual Workflow actually does lookups really well. So looking in your system for existing records that meet certain criteria. Um, you also want to consider using Visual Workflow if you want input from users. So you can walk them through all sorts of little customized processes, um, getting their input in fields or in little forms within your system. Okay. 
Okay. I'm not seeing any more questions. Um, so I think we may wrap up here. This was a shorter webinar. But thank you again to everyone for joining us today. Um, and we, we will be sending out this recording within the next 48 hours. Um, so big shout out to Sarah from KVIE for sharing her story uh, about marketing automation. And thank you to Melissa for contributing as well with these marketing automation concepts and best practices. Um, and we will wrap up.